tonight and a Mark Meat special in the company of socialite, aristocrat, reality star, entrepreneur and model and it girl, no less. Yeah. By the way, I'm apparently I'm an it boy. Mm -hmm. So and if you believe that, you'll believe anything. It's Lady Victoria Hervey. Hello. Um, Alistair's but... kept the camera on you even when I'm talking. and I don't blame him. He's a man of taste. <laughs> Director Alistair. Uh, you are Lady Victoria Hervey. Yeah. Um, that must have its perks. Yeah, I'm, yeah, of course it has its perks. Um, you know, when I was younger, I really did not like having the title thing and I hid it for as long as I could at school, didn't tell anyone. Um, and then my grandmother wrote me at boarding school with a lady on and I had oh. to explain to friends you got what it was. Mm. Got outed. Um, but it is, a, it, you know, it definitely has its bonuses. Good tables at restaurants. Yeah. Also, if you're having a bit of an argument with your other half, do you ever kind of drop the fact that you're a lady into the conversation? <laughs> no. So he won't empty the dishwasher. He wants you to. You know, I think you'll find Have a dishwasher. Yeah. Lady oh, Victoria Hervey. Because yeah, I can tell you, if I was Lord yeah. Dolan, I would use that against Mrs. Dolan <laughs> relentlessly. Yeah, yeah, she'd never no, hear the end of it. I don't use it in that kind of way. <laughs> you don't <laughs> use it. But it's just... I don't know, maybe going through an airport, it helps. Going through security. Yeah. And in America, it must be quite a big deal. Mm -hmm. No, they, they, uh, I remember when I started going through the LA security and they're literally like, oh, Lady Victoria is like, like Lady Diana, you know, they yeah. actually think I'm living at the palace. <laughs> so. um, but the thing is, it's, it's um, easy to prejudge you and, mm -hmm. and to assume that somehow you were born to riches, which is not the case, is it? No, I mean, I had to, you know, I had to work. You, you know, I, uh, I was at boarding school in England and then I had a gap year, which, you know, it was a very trendy thing to do was having a deferred entry at the time, which probably shouldn't have done it because I had way too much fun in my gap year to go to uni. Um, but I was going to be studying French and history of art and it's At a four-year course. Yeah. And you skipped it. St. Andrews, Exeter and Bristol. I got into all the universities. Good universities. I wanted to, yeah. Um, all the ones I wanted to go to. And then I was traveling around Malaysia and Thailand for a couple of months, studied in Florence, history of art for about six months, Queen's secretarial course. And then I started working and met someone, he was like 15 years older than me, and I suddenly got thrown into the social life of the London scene. And the rest is history. Yeah. Are you a rebel? Uh, I, I suppose I don't like abiding to the rules always, mm. so maybe rebel at heart. And you've left America. You've been in California yeah. for about 19 years? Yeah, and almost two decades, actually, around... 2004, mm. I moved and I just got kind of homesick, really, the last couple of years. And um, I just thought it was time to move back. California changed a lot. Um, I mean, look, the world changed, but California really changed. And it just wasn't the place I wanted to be living yeah, I mean, we just uh, touched anymore. on it briefly during the Super break. Super dangerous. A, a lot of politics. Um, it, it, it's the, exactly like America is completely polarised as far as the politics. So If you're a Republican in California, you're evil, right? You're the devil's yeah, you're form. really evil. <laughs> they don't understand it. You, you have to want Joe Biden. Like, the guy doesn't even know what his own name is. So, you know, I started being quite vocal about things, I suppose, around COVID. I started speaking out about the riots that we had and, you know, I started reposting Candace Owens and mm. it didn't go down who is, who, well. is, um, who is, I suppose, a conservative political commentator. That doesn't make you right wing, I suppose. No. Because I uh, mean, there, there are many in America on the left, including the comedian Bill Maher, a complete mm -hmm. lifelong Democrat supporter right. and lefty, who's challenged a lot, a lot of the of, kind of political correctness and right. woke stuff. He's now being called right wing, even mm. though he's been a left. Well, a lot, a lot of people converted. Like, I never really followed politics that closely, to mm. be honest. Like, until 2020, I, you know, I mean, I voted for, I wanted Obama. Can mm. you imagine? Like, he created ISIS. Like, so I really had no idea about anything until a few years ago. And but if then, you objected to some of the woke stuff, I suppose, the trans ideology, right. or what, what, what's kind of got your back Yeah, the, the trans thing is, is sick. Like, that to me is, you know, the fact that they can chemically castrate a child um, so young in California is, I just think it's horrible. You know, the parent goes to jail if they suddenly don't agree with their child transitioning. So you've now got all these young kids, and I, I don't know what's going to... Imagine what's going to happen to them in the next 10 years. It's a real I mean, worry. it's like an experiment, because the drug companies make so much 
off each ch child, right? That transitions. So, I mean, you obviously probably watched um, the documentary, What's a Woman? Matt Walsh, yeah. yeah. Very, very powerful. And then, of course, that's before you even get to women's rights. What is a woman? I mean, yeah. none of them could say a woman and is got ovaries. And female-only spaces, yes. which used to be <laughs> like, sacred, which are now no right, longer. Right. Um, a double rapist in a, in a, uh, in yeah, a Scottish Yeah, so no, I, I, I don't point. agree with any of the, the massive trans agenda that is going on. Uh, did you date Prince Andrew? Uh, I don't want to go into it, you know, because I, I do speak it's a lot about... Business. I speak, you know, we, we, we just went out a few times, like, literally. Um, More of a friend. But I have a friend, and we've been... You know, I have been obviously super vocal about everything going on because, you know... This woman who accused him, he's Virginia Jufre. He's never even met her. And, um, you know. Has he been done up like a right royal kipper? Has he been stitched? He up? had some really bad advice, I mm -hmm. think. Um, basically, he had lawyers that were criminal lawyers for a civil case. So he had terrible advice. And, um, you know, this girl has just lied her whole way through everything. Um, I'm not even going to say I believe. She is. She is. What about that photo? The photo of him with his arms around <clears throat> her uh, um, dating the back. The, the, the photo 15, is, is nothing real about that photo. And I've spoken on TV for, for the last year now. There's probably, you know, even Galen said there's 50 things wrong with that photo, but there's so many things wrong with that photo. And I've actually seen, you see, I've actually seen pictures of that space. And when you actually measure the furniture, the table that's on the right-hand side in that picture, it's, it's really high. Um, tell me about the Andrew that you know. Is he a good guy? Has he been mischaracterised? Um, yeah, I th well, obviously, like, the, you know, that interview was um, oh, very badly advised. Mm -hmm. They had a representative for Buckingham Palace, apparently, in that interview. Um, so it's almost like they, they wanted to set him up. That's how... It felt like you almost feel like the firm, the royal family themselves. Deliberately... Well, I think there's been a lot. You know, Charles, the older brother, has always been a bit jealous of of him. Um, he had a very successful um, military career. Military career for twenty years. You know, it's it's sort of like well, he is the spare, isn't he, in this one? So you think too, King Just... Charles is potentially jealous of Andrew? I've heard that he's always been jealous of, of him. So it's kind of like as soon as the Queen is gone, like, daggers are out, you know? Yeah. The Royal Lodge chucked out of there or had it certainly um, had his, his well, income Well, they've got cut? they've got time. But, I mean, look, Charles has inherited how much money? And, like, what, he can't now help his brother out? Like, basically, like, Prince Andrew was made to settle, right? He didn't have a choice. And then as soon as he was made to do it, they then just has been taking everything else away. Like, little bit by bit. What's next for you? Because you're so young. You're back Thank in you. Britain. You look fabulous. Thank you. So um, what would you like to do next? Um, we will see. You know, I, I'm just kind of getting feeling... I'm, I'm feeling it out. I, I love GB News. You know, this is what, like, one of my, my favourite channel, really. Great. And um, so, yeah, I'd like to do more, more TV. What is it about, without blowing smoke up our own derrieres, what is it about mm. the channel that you like? Well, we can we can say what we think, can't mm. we? And we're not going to get cancelled. So, <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> we're uh, not censored on this channel. You're right. You know, I'm not going to get Susanna Reid like going crazy at me and going, "Oh, you can't say that." Of course, it's because the ITV, I called I ITV, called this girl a con woman. The, the GMB uh, presenter called her a con artist. You know, uh, Virginia Dufresne. Yeah, she's a con artist. I'll say it a million times. Okay. So, well, look, a thrill to have you in the studio. Good to and see you too. Do come back and see us soon. It's never boring when you're here. This oh, show thank you. has a motto we don't do boring, and that certainly doesn't yeah. happen when you're in the studio. Uh, Lady Very Victoria Herbert.